Okay, so while that starts, uh, uh, so so far in the course we have looked at uh, feed-forward neural networks. We have seen how to train them, uh, and we have seen uh, two special cases of feed-forward neural networks. One was the auto encoders for learning uh, rep representations or learning uh, latent representations of uh, inputs, and the other thing that we had seen was uh, how to use a feed-forward neural network to learn word representations, where we saw this word two-way algorithm and its different variants. It was continuous bag of words, skip gram model, glove and so on. So those are all in some sense applications of the feed forward neural network. And now we will move on from there, we will look at a different type of neural network today which is convolutional neural networks and we look at some specific architectures which have become popular over the past few years. Okay. Uh, so with that I will start this lecture on convolutional neural networks. So in the first module uh, we will look at the convolution operation. Okay. So let us see. Uh, so suppose we are tracking the position of an aeroplane using a laser sensor at discrete time intervals, right? So uh, you have this. Uh, okay, so you have this aeroplane. Suppose it is going from, uh, say, Chennai to Delhi, and at discrete time intervals, you are seeing the uh, tracking the position of the aeroplane, right? How far it is from Chennai at this point, right? Maybe it's 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, and so on. And now your laser, you think that it might be noisy, it might not be giving you very accurate uh, measurements. So you would be taking these measurements at say intervals of, of course it is not in practice you would not do that, but just uh, indulge me for the purpose of illustration that say you are taking these measurements every 5 seconds or 10 seconds or something like that. Now since a sensor is noisy, instead of relying on a single measurement, you would probably want to take the average of the past few measurements that you have taken. So that would give you a more accurate representation of uh, what the current position is. Does that make sense? Like you are taking multiple measurements and taking averages of those, right? And of course, more recent, recent measurements are more important as compared to the previous uh, measurements, right? So this is suppose at time step t, say this was t minus 5 seconds and this was t minus 5 minutes, suppose. So obviously, you would not want to take, uh, give a very large weightage to the measurement that you have taken t minus 5 minutes back, right? Because the plane would have moved by a lot by that time. So it would rely more on the recent measurements and less on the previous measurements, right? So now the mathematical way of writing this is that you know the positions or the readings that you have taken at time steps 1, 2, 3 up to time step t. You are interested in a revised estimation of this uh, measurement, right? So you have taken some measurement at time step t and you want a revised measurement of that. And the way you are going to compute that is you are going to take a weighted average. So w is the weight of all the previous measurements that you have taken, right? So the measurement that you took at t minus 1, t minus 2, t minus 3, all the way up to t minus infinity, okay? And for each of them, we would have a weight associated with this. So this operation, right, this thing, you can write it as the following operation, that you have a vector of measurements or an array of measurements, which is x, and you have an array of weights associated with these measurements. The farther the measurement from the current time step, hopefully smaller is the weight assigned to that. And this operation is known as the convolution operation, right? So you have x which is the input, w is known as the filter and the operation that is defined as this equation is known as the convolution operation, right? But, but of course, in practice, you would not do this from infinity, right? You would probably keep a window. You will say that I will rely on the previous 6 measurements. That means whatever I took at t minus 1 second, t minus 2 second up to t minus 6 seconds, right? Beyond that, it does not really make sense. So let us see how this computation happens, right? So this weight array. So now what would be the uh, dimension of this weight array? How many entries would it have? 7, right? 0 to 6. So 7 entries, okay? And this is what my situation looks like, right? So this is the x, the measurements which I have taken using the laser. Okay, so I have taken some measurements. Now I am at a particular uh, time step and I want to make a revised estimate. So I have this xt and from that I want to compute st. And the way I am going to do that is by taking a weighted average of all these previous measurements. Is the setup clear to everyone? Okay. And now this is what my formula is going to be. So the revised estimate of s6 is going to be whatever was x6 into w0. That means the weight assigned to the current time step. x phi into w minus 1, that means weight assigned to the time step minus 1. 
x4 into minus 2 and so on. So, you get this ok. So, I have these 7 weights and I will multiply with them with the 7 previous readings 1 is to 1 multiplication and I will get the weighted average and using that I get a revised estimate. Now, I want to get a revised estimate for the next entry. How will I get it? I will just slide this weight matrix right. So, I will just slide it by 1, I will again do the same computation and get the revised uh, measurements. Again for the next entry I will slide it by 1, slide it by 1, slide it by 1 and I will keep getting these entries ok. So, everyone gets this setup how do you do the convolution operation? It is basically a weighted average of the previous entries hmm? fine. So, here the input as well as the kernel is kind of one dimensional right. So, you have uh, I mean it is uh, so, you do not have a 2 D input here, you just have a single dimensional input here. Can you use a convolution operation on a 2 D input also? Do you know of any 2 D inputs? Images right. So, we can think of images as 2 D inputs. Now, again I am trying to do the same thing, the setup is the same, the story just changes from laser to a camera now. So, I have taken an image, maybe the image was captured and I am not very confident about all the pixels that I have captured. Okay. So, now for any given pixel I want to re-estimate it using its neighborhood that is what I want to do ok. So, this is the pixel and I am going to look at some neighborhood around it right. So, every cell here is one pixel just assume that every cell here is one pixel. So, now I am going to re-estimate this pixel by taking a weighted average of all its neighborhoods right. So, now can you tell me what is my filter going to look like in this particular case? my filter would be just 3 cross 3 right. So, whatever neighbors I want to average on for every neighbor I want a weight. So, if I am going to average on a neighborhood of 3 cross 3 then for each of these I will want a weight. So, my filter would also be of size 3 cross 3. How many of you get this? Okay. Uh, so, we now like to use a 2D filter which would be m cross n ok and in general it would be m cross m. So, it would always be a square filter, but uh, I am just taking the case. Now, what this nasty looking formula is doing right. So, I have a particular uh, pixel. So, this is an image. So, I will refer to this pixel as i i j right. So, it is the i th, i j th entry in the uh, image. I want a revised estimate for that. I want an s i j for that. So, the way I am going to do that is I am going to look at m rows and n columns before it right. So, I am going to look at this neighborhood of m cross n ok and for each of these I would have a weight associated with it. So, if I am looking at say for example, this was uh, 4 comma 4, this pixel was 4 comma 4, then I will look at 4 minus uh, 1 comma 4 minus 1. So, that would be i 3 comma 3. So, I will look at that neighbor and with that neighbor I would have some weight associated. Do you get that how this formula expands? So, this formula would have m cross n terms for every term you would have a filled uh, have a weight and that weight you can just represent it as this filter matrix. So, you get this what this formula is doing it looks a bit uh, nasty, but it is just the weighted average of all the neighborhood that you have and the neighborhood is a two dimensional neighborhood in this case. How many if you get this properly ok. Now, this in this formula actually I am looking at minus a and minus b that means I am looking at previous neighbors right. Now, you should have these questions right why previous neighbors why not future neighbors. So, why am I not looking at this neighborhood? So, there is no correct answer here different convolution operations I mean different uh, uh, packages use different convolution operations, but the most standard one I believe uh, is when you look at the next neighborhood right that means you are at this pixel and you will look at this neighborhood the neighborhood after it right not the before it ok. And in fact, uh, so this is the formula that I am going to look at plus j and plus b that means I am looking at pixels in the rows after this and in the columns after this pixel. All of you get this instead of before. Now, what is even more natural to do? The name surrounding thing right. So, I will have this pixel and I look at it such a way that this pixel is the center of the neighborhood right. So, that is what I am going to go towards after a couple of slides and that is what I will use for all my convolution operations. But in terms of textbook definitions these are the definitions that you will find in textbooks ok. So, let us let us apply this to a toy example. So, I have this input which is two dimensional input, I have a kernel which is a 2 cross 2 kernel. So, my m is equal to n is equal to 2. So, I am going to place this kernel at this location ok and then what will I get as the output a into w plus b into x plus e into y plus f into z right. 
and I will keep sliding this to get the other entries. Do you observe something about the input and the output? Size, the output size has reduced, why? We will get back to this. So, right now I just need you to notice, it is obvious nothing great about it, but I will just get back to it more formally later on. Okay? Uh, so, for the rest of the discussion, we will use the following formula for convolution, which is the centered formula, right. So, m by 2 to m by 2, that means I will be looking at a neighborhood, which is centered on the pixel of interest, that is why this minus m by 2 to plus m by 2, is that fine? Okay? So, this is how I am going to look at it. So, this is how I will place, if this is the pixel of interest, which I want to re-estimate, I will place the kernel such that it, this pixel lies at the center of the kernel. Okay? Uh, so, we will be looking at both preceding and succeeding neighbors. Okay. So, let us see some examples of 2D convolutions applied to images. So, this is an image, I decide to apply the following convolution operation to it. Can you tell me what the resulting image would be? Blurred. Why blurred? We are taking the average, right? so it would be blurred. You get the intuition? So, this kernel basically I have fitted at every pixel and I have computed the average around it and replace that pixel by that average value. And when you are going to take average, things are going to get blurred, right? because all the sharpness is gone. Okay? Now, let us look at this kernel. What will this do? Sharpen. Why? Because one was blurred, the other has to be sharpened. What is happening here? It is subtracting the neighbors. right? So, you are taking uh, 5 times the current pixel and subtracting the neighbors from it. right? So, if the neighbors are similar, those would get subtracted and this would stand out really. right? Does that make sense? Okay? So, this will result in a but this, okay, in my, on my laptop, this looks like a sharpened image. I do not know why it is looking like this here. Okay, it, it is a sharpened image. Okay, just trust me, you can. So, actually, uh, the, a comment, right? So, people who have used Adobe or any of these uh, Photoshopping uh, uh, softwares, right? So, you have this click button, right, where you say take an image, sharpen it, blur it. So, this is exactly what the uh, tool is doing in the background. It is applying this convolution operation throughout the image. So, when you say blur, it is basically placing that convolution operation throughout the image and computing the blurred image. And same for sharpening and all these other special effects that you have, most of them come out of some convolution operation. Okay? So, for example, the next one, what would this do? Okay, so, I will give you a hint. When will this result in a zero output? When all the neighbors are the same as this. right? So, then when will it result in a non-zero output? when there is a difference, when does this difference, so looking at this image, tell me one place where you know that it will result in a non-zero output, all the boundaries, right. So, this is basically an edge detector, this, okay, oh, in the slides it appears properly, okay. So, this is basically an edge detector and you get the intuition that these boundaries, where the neighbors are not the same as the current pixel, you will not get a zero value. In this case, when all the neighbors are the same as the current pixel, so you are taking the sum of the 8 neighbors and subtracting the current value 8 times. So, that would be 0. Right? Okay. So, enough of examples. So, now we will see a working example of a 2D convolution. So, I just want to drill this idea of what happens when you do a 2D convolution. So, what we are going to do is, we have this 3 cross 3 kernel okay? and assume that every thing here is a pixel. Okay? Everything here is a pixel. So, I am going to slide this 3 cross 3 kernel across this filter. Now, when I place the filter once on the image, how many outputs do I get? One output. So, if I keep sliding it across the image, I will keep getting one one pixel and the output. Okay? So, what the resulting thing that I get is known as a feature map. Okay? Because it is the original input that you have taken. For every pixel, you have tried to approximate it or whatever filter weights you have applied. Right? It necessarily does not mean that you are taking an average. It could be some uh, weird average of your neighborhood, right? So, you have extracted some features from there. So, for example, in the edge detector case, you could think of it that you have extracted the feature that this pixel does not lie at a boundary, right? That is why you get the black pixel. Do you get that? Do you see this way of interpreting a convolution operation? That you are trying to extract some features from that neighborhood. So, in this earlier example, whenever you got a black, you are basically extracting the feature that this pixel does not lie at a boundary. Is that okay? Fine. So, now you could get one such feature map by using a single 3 cross 3 convolution operation. Okay? If I use multiple such convolution operations, what would happen? I will get multiple feature maps. Okay? So, let us try to understand this. What is the dimension of my original image? m cross n into 3. Why is it in 3? 
RGB. Oh wow, okay, RGB channels, okay. RGB is what we'll have, right? So we'll have this three cross uh, M cross N. So we'll return back to this idea. And from now this one image by using a single kernel, so this, in fact, in for this figure, right, I'm assuming that the input is one cross M cross N. I'm not assuming there are three channels, although it's a colored image, but just uh, bear with me. So it's a one cross M cross N image. And when I apply a filter, I get a one feature map. If I apply K such filters, I'll get K feature maps. So one feature map could be for the blurring one, one could be the sharpening one, one could be the edge detector and so on, right? There are various such filters that you could apply. Uh, okay. Now in the 1D case, we slide a one dimensional filter over a one dimensional input. In the 2D case, we slide a two dimensional filter on a two dimensional input. What would happen in the 3D case? So now we are going to this RGB images, right? So you'll have three cross M cross N as the input. What would happen in the 3G case, 3D case, not 3G? So what would a 3D filter look like? Look like a cuboid, a box basically, and we'll call it a volume. Why volume? Because it has a width, it has a height, and it will have a depth. So this is what a 3D filter would look like. I'll assume that its depth is the same as the depth of your input. What's the depth of your input in this case? Three. So I'll assume that the depth of the filter is the same as the depth of the input. And the uh, width and height could be three cross three, five cross five, seven cross seven, anything, right? So we'll get into that in more details later on. So once again, we'll slide this volume across the entire image. Okay, what is the output going to be? 2D or 3D? Why? So when I was 1D, I was getting 1D output. When I was 2D, I was getting 2D output. 3D, again 2D output, why? Because I have assumed that, no, not width. The depth of the filter is the same as the depth of the input. So now you just imagine this if you can. Suppose the filter was of depth two instead of three, okay? Then I would slide it horizontally first, vertically, and then across the depth also. So then what would the output be in that case? Three dimensional and it would have depth of two. Everyone gets that, right? But for this lecture, I'm always going to assume that the depth of the filter is equal to the depth of the input, always, right? And that's how it is for all the convolution neural networks that we'll see. The depth of the input is going to be equal to the depth of the filter, the rather the depth of the filter is going to be equal to the depth of the input. So whenever I apply a 3D filter, I'm actually doing a 2D convolution because I'm moving only along the width and the height, I'm not moving along the depth. So the output is going to be 2D, okay? Uh, so now, can I have multiple such filters? Yes. Each filter will give me a 2D output. If I have K such filters, I'll have a K cross 2D output, right? K 2D outputs. 